Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I'm going to take you through how to replace a missing or a broken free spool lever spring. That's the one that connects the free spool eccentric with the yoke and the jack me mechanism which pushes down to enable the uh, reel to free spool for casting and line dropping. And a customer brought in this reel. It uh, needed a uh, the free spool release. It's got a little bit of grease on it, but not terrible. And I got a little bit ahead of myself here. I've opened the reel up. I've taken the bridge off. Uh, for those of you that want to attempt this and they're not familiar with how to do that, then uh, just follow my reversing the process as we reinstall and uh, you'll see how that works. But uh, this looks like the culprit. There's some kind of broken line in here. And what that probably did was get caught under the, uh, the free spool release and force that uh, spring to break. So we're going to start by taking off the, all of the elements in the side plate. I've also taken off the drags and uh, the drag assembly, main gear, etc. Just uh, so that I can make sure that the rest of the reel is in good working order when I reinstall. So the first thing you want to do is get rid of the uh, internal pieces and parts. The, uh, you do that by removing the, the jack, the yoke, and the two side plate springs. Now, as many of you know who watch this uh, video, I um, put all my pieces and parts into a parts tray. Uh, I use the bottom of a milk jug case here. Uh, but the idea there is to just keep track of your parts so that when you go to reinstall, you know where they are. So we're just going to take all of those and put them in here for now. And that leaves me with the, um, the side plate, the eccentric, the free spool uh, release lever on the other side, and um, a replacement spring. So, uh, and actually I, I have the wrong spring. Let me get another spring. There's two different sides of the... Um, the free spool release springs, some mount from the left, some mount from the right. You just need to know which one it is that uh, your reel has. Uh, now I have the, the correct spring. This one mounts from the right hand side. So we'll just put the other one away back in my parts basket. Okay, once we have that off, we want to make sure that the side plate is clean. There's no sense uh, losing the opportunity here. You've taken the reel apart. Might as well clean it and do a general lubrication while you're at it. And as you'll know, there's a lot of grease on here, so I do wear a uh, latex gl glove to uh, protect my hand uh, as best I can. And um, I find that uh, keeping that junk off your hand is a pretty good thing. There's a pen re reels wrench that will work this, uh, this little 9mm nut here. Or you can just simply use a 9mm wrench. To me, it's easier to, to use the wrench. It's a little thicker. And I like the closed-faced uh, part of the piece to uh, make that easy for me. Once we do that, we're going to remove the, the lever and the nut, and we're going to push the eccentric through. This would be the eccentric. I'm just going to dry up any, any loose grease that's laying there. And then it's pretty simple to install. You want to just take the, the little hook that's on the, uh, the end of the spring, and that goes inside the hole in the eccentric. We're going to go ahead and reinstall that eccentric. A little hook fell out. No big deal. And you'll notice here that you need to take this tag end of the free spool uh, of, of the spring and it needs a seat in here. So what happens generally is you want to back this assembly off and work it over the lip. A little bit of a compression, but uh, once you get it in there, sometimes you need. Uh, so, so there you go. Now we've got the spring loaded, but what's going to happen is there's a little ramp here, and in order to get that ramp set properly, uh, you need to move this to the what I'll call the break-even point. And to do that, I very gently use a, a needle nose or another pliers. And typically just grab it on the stud and you'll feel when it, uh, it when it evens up which is right about there. But once you do that 
you can push this down completely because your screw will be under the ramp now. Turn around to the other side and you can load this handle uh, lever. And then we can go ahead and put that 9, uh, nine millimeter screw, uh, screw back in. And we'll be loaded there now. And that will enable us to have a proper, tr properly working free spool mechanism. Okay, so that's simple. We just uh, have released the spring now. Now we have a spring that's probably providing the tension on here and the foot. Okay, to reinstall, and those of you that uh, haven't done this before, just uh, remember that this is the opposite if you want to take this apart. The two uh, uh, springs go in, the yoke goes on, and this yoke's got a little bit of crud on it, so I'm going to just use some light steel wool to get that crud off. The good news is this reel was very well lubricated, so uh, it didn't cause any corrosion or that. It just caused some buildup of some uh, uh, dried grease and the like. Okay, with that in place then, we're going to grab a... Um, I'm going to try and find my, my little screwdriver. There it is. I'm going to grab a little bit of blue grease. We're going to put that on to both sides of the yoke then. I'm going to insert my, my spool gear and put a little bit of grease on that as well. And I'm going to put a little bit of grease on that bearing side, the side plate bearing. Okay, right over the top. And once we put that over the top, we can press down. We can grab the jack. And notice the jack's got two sides. It's got prongs sticking out on the flat side. The prongs provide the ramp or the free spool release and they go inside like this. Once you have that, we're pretty much done with the side plate. We'll move over to the gear uh, bridge for now. We want to take the, uh, the assembly and put that back on. So just again, for reminder sakes, there's three metal washers and there's three fabric washers in this and these have all been replaced recently, I can tell that. By the look on them, you can see the grid and these are pretty flexible right now, so I don't need to put any dry grease on these. If they were stiff or dried or worn, uh, you would go ahead and use something like a Cal's Universal Dry Grease. Um, that would help you. And uh, if they were really worn, you wouldn't want to replace them. The middle washer has keys or ears on it. They go into slots in the main gear. Make sure that they are properly seated in those slots. When they are, it will look like this. It will be proud. Uh, the gear will be proud of that. Last of the washers. Last of the metal. And then there's a collar washer that goes on top of that. And you notice I keep going into my parts basket. It's uh, a convenient way to know where all of this stuff is. Okay, once we have that, it's simply a matter of just reversing the tag setup and just working that in. Now there's two little studs on the side plate here. You want to make sure that those two studs sit in the, the holes in the bridge to make sure it's properly seated. And then, again, if you haven't done this before, understand that there are two different side plate screws for the bridge. There's a partially threaded and a fully threaded. The fully threaded goes up top. That's because that's where those springs are. And the uh, keeping that uh, partially threaded allows those springs to ride on the unthreaded piece and not get hot, caught up. Then we're going to go to the bottom. I do this in an X pattern. Again, fully threaded goes below. And I'm saying below, but you're not seeing it. You're seeing it upside down here. But the bottom of the reel is here. And then we'll go with the partially threaded one. So what I like to do is get each one of these started before I tighten down. And I have them that way now. So once I get them all fully started, I go back and I I thought I had it. I guess I don't have this one set. So I'm going to back the other one off. And that's why you don't tighten them down completely, because there's, uh, there's always a piece in here that uh, if it doesn't line up properly, you need that little bit of play. Looks like I got it that time. Sometimes the visual cue is a little bit better. There you go. Got that one. And that's why you do the X as well, because if you can catch both sides, then you don't get a twist in it. 
and uh, usually gets an easier set to that. All right, so what we've done is we've replaced the spring by removing all the side plate pieces, and uh, that enables you to do the uh, replacement of the spring by taking the eccentric out after you've taken the, the fully loaded piece off. I'm having a little bit of trouble with this one up top, but it'll catch shortly. Visuals are always good. So you, uh, again, you want to play with this. It's just uh, it's one of those natures of this beast here. wiggle room. Very tight tolerances, so if you're you're off by just a little bit, you, uh, you have trouble grabbing that screw. And this one's turning into a little bit of a wrestling match. So let's try by taking the other piece out and starting with that one. So I always uh, refer back to some things I was told a long time ago when I started doing this stuff. You need uh, two things to work on reels. You need a uh, a lot of patience and you need a, set of, a sense of humor. And right now this one's kind of testing my sense of humor I think. Just not understanding. There you go, that looks like I got it this time. So just a little bit of trial. Don't force anything. Forcing things can just uh, wind up in a lot of bent or broken pieces and parts. Just know what has to happen and make it work accordingly. I have trouble on the other side, do I? Well, that should be seated. I don't understand that one. There you go. All right. Now we got it. Now we got it. It just takes a little while. So don't feel frustrated if uh, you go through this uh, and you find that you can't get a screw seated. Just play around with them. Again, it's pretty tight tolerances, and that causes some. Uh... All right, we're going to test to make sure it works this way, and test to make sure our spring is working, which it is. You can see how it moves the spool gear in and out. That takes that off of the collar on the spool. This is the collar on the spool. There's a little square shouldered here, and what happens is that lines in with the square inside the, uh, the spool gear. And when you pull it back, it pulls it off of that collar and it allows it to spin on this portion of the axle and uh, spin freely. And when you engage, it wraps into that shoulder. Okay, so with that then, we're going to put the furrow back on. And again, I got ahead of you on the front side of this video. But... Uh, There's a uh, little pin sticking out here, which is kind of interesting. All right, we got it. Okay, and then uh, put the star drag nut on. And if you run into any trouble with a star drag like this one, where up top you can't catch it properly, just put a, uh, a Phillips head screwdriver into the pinion. Uh, your sleeve. That will enable you to hold that with the tension you need. We'll go ahead and put the handle back on. The handle nut back on. And then we can test this on the body of the reel. I'll just grab my, uh, this is an aftermarket handle wrench. It's available at mysticparts.com, formerly penparts.com. And uh, if you do a lot of work on pen reels, it's worth having. It's thicker and it's longer than the one that's provided in the uh, pen reel box. However, if you only work on reels occasionally and uh, don't mind it, just go ahead and use the one that comes with the reel. There's no reason not to use that one. It's very effective. Uh, but like I said, I... Uh, I do a lot of these reels and I just find it's convenient and easier to, uh, to use the bigger wrench. 
But if you want, it's available on mysticports.com. Okay, we're just having all kinds of fun with these set screws and things today, aren't we? So these are jig masters, and the jig masters that I'm working on here belong to a, a charter boat up here in the northeast, and uh, they've uh, they've proven themselves very well. I know that uh, I, I think the captain probably has 50 or 60 of these in his fleet, and uh, has minimal problems with them. Most of them are, are abuse kind of things. All right, let's just make sure when we trip the lever now, we do have a free spool, and when we trip it back the other way, we are operational. Okay, that's uh, that's kind of how you re replace that uh, free spool tension spring. And uh, if you have that problem, don't be afraid of it. Uh, follow the video as I did. Take pictures along the way if you're wondering you know, how did this reel come apart, how does it go back together, and so on. But really, it's not that difficult a task. And once, uh, once you've uh, mastered it, uh, you can work on these things uh, pretty much uh, very effectively and solve most of the problems that are associated with this, whether that's drag washer replacement, which you saw me do earlier, spring replacement, uh, clearing trap line out of there, which you saw there was a piece in here for that, and so on. But at any rate, I hope this has helped. And uh, if you enjoy the video, please like it. If you want to see more, please subscribe. Again, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.